Lights Let go. We're good? Yep. Okay. So this is our first projectile problem, and I've skipped most of the words part, because you guys will be able to go from the words to the picture. But we have Mario Ball being launched off a 12-meter cliff, okay, and he's being fired up at a 30-degree angle above the horizontal at 3 meters per second. And there are a lot of different questions I could ask based on these initial conditions. For this first one, I'm just going to ask one, but it's going to end up answering two things. How far does Mario Ball land from the base of the cliff? Well, if you're going to label that in the picture, would you label from here to here? Yes. How far from the base of the cliff? Yes. Okay. What direction is that in? X. X. So we're looking for X minus X naught. That's what we're looking for. Also at this point, it's no longer okay to use X's and Y's interchangeably. If you mean X, put X. If you mean Y, put Y. Otherwise you're going to confuse yourself when you're doing the problems. Now, in the x direction, actually, let me get the free by diagram. Which way is positive? So up and right is positive. Free by diagram. For all of these problems, we're going to neglect air resistance. And we're not talking about while it's in someone's hand or on someone's foot, if it's a football or whatever. It's while it's in the air. While it's in the air, if we neglect air resistance, how many arrows are we going to have? One. And which way is it going to go? Down. Down. So force of the weight down. You don't have to write this next part. But if we sum forces in the x direction here, how many forces are there in the x direction? Zero. X, left and right. How many forces are there in the X direction? Zero. 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 So if you have zero forces, okay, what's your acceleration have to be? Zero. Zero. So this free body diagram does tell us that the acceleration in the X is zero. And then if we're in free fall, this is the only force in the Y, you can sum your forces, the M's will cancel. And what acceleration will you get if you're in free fall in the Y? Negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Yes, very good. Negative. Negative 9.8 meters per second squared. This all assumes you call up and right positive. Okay. Now, dig out your motion equations. Those five motion equations. Dig them out. And take a look at the second one. Although any of them with displacement will work. Is that your second one on your sheet? Yes. What will happen to this equation if the acceleration is zero? What will happen to this whole part? It'll become what? That will be zero. Zero. So what you'll be left with is just x minus x naught equals v naught t for the x direction. I'm going to rewrite that over here just for space, and I'm going to change it a little bit. Okay? Instead of writing v naught, well, if the acceleration is zero, is the initial velocity, the mid velocity, and the final velocity all going to be the same in the x direction? Acceleration zero, which means in the x direction our velocity will stay the same. same. So instead of writing v naught, what I like to do is just write vx times t. But it is a motion equation. In fact, any of the motion equations that have displacement in it, you'll get a result like this if you do the algebra correctly. You'll get how far equals how fast times how long. Or you'll get something like 5 equals 5. Well, true, not very useful. Okay, it'll all turn into something like that. This is the only equation, okay, if this is our free by diagram. This is the only equation you're going to need for the x direction. So if acceleration is zero, this is all you need. It's constant velocity. You just take how fast times how long to get how far. I'm going to get rid of that. We're looking for how far in the x. Okay? We're going to get vx here in just a minute. That's the component of the velocity in the x. Do we have time? Nope. And this is it for the x direction. So what other direction do you think we might look at? Y. The y direction. Because time is the one thing that is shared in both the x and the y direction. It is a scalar. Okay? But first, before we do all that, uh, let's get our components. So, and I'll write v naught x for now, although you could call it vx. Will be 3 meters per second. Show some scratch work. Uh, real, actually, I'll just show it right here. There's, for automatic people, 3 meters per second. There's your angle from the x axis counterclockwise. So 3 cosine 30. Make sure you're in degree mode. Go ahead and get a number. I'll get one too. V naught in the Y will be 3 sine 30. Trick people. If you want to draw the triangle real quick, feel free. Trust me, you'll get it figured out. Anybody else get 2.6? Yeah. Okay. 2.6. And our Y component. 1.5? That makes sense. 30 degrees, so the x should be bigger than the y. Yeah, sounds good. Somebody else confirm both of those? Josh or? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So you use d 
do you always <coughs> cosine and sine so automatically for these problems? No, that's the thing where you draw the x-y axis, you go to counterclockwise. Yes, if you're doing the automatic way, yes, but you got to get your theta correctly. Okay. So you draw your x-y axis and you, until you hit your vector. All right. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay. All right, so 2.6 and 1.5. Now I'm going to erase the v-naught. It is the initial velocity in the x. It's also the final velocity, the mid-velocity. There's only one velocity in the x. And it's 2.6. Also, now is a good time for me to point out. I will not use this three again after the components anywhere in the problem. Okay. Once I have my x and the y, I do everything separately. This three, except here in the components, will never show up again in the problem. Now we need time. We have vx. We're stuck in the x direction, so I'm going to list my five variables for the y direction. So y minus y not acceleration in the y, initial velocity, any order. V final in the y in time, and notice I'm writing all the y's. You should too. Keep the stuff straight. This is different than the x direction. So now we're thinking about what's happening in the vertical direction. At this point, it's an old problem. You guys remember problems where we tossed up, and I asked you how long until it hits the ground? Yeah. Did we have that on the first test? Have you done several of those? Yes. Many, many of them. Okay. That's all we're doing. What's it being thrown up at? Can't quite read my writing. 1.5? Make that a little cleaner. 1.5 meters per second. That's what's being thrown up at. So now it's just basically toss it up, ask how long does it take to hit. You've done this problem before. The new stuff is now over. The new stuff is, oh, we got to think about the x and the y separately. We've got to calculate components. This is something you should already know how to do. So acceleration of the y is negative 9.8. We're in free fall in the y direction. Initial velocity in the y, it's right here, 1.5. V final in the y, don't know. Time, don't know. Don't care about that. What's my displacement in this problem? 12 meters. Almost. Negative 12 meters because I called up and write positive. And this is a vector. So negative 12 meters. Take a couple minutes. Pick your equation and solve. And I'll do the same up here, but you should be able to do it. So. Yeah, you'll need a graphing calculator. Just rewriting it up here for those of you that are used to that form, and then somebody's figure out what the answer is. Yeah? Where did you get negative 12 meters from? It starts here. It ends down here in the y direction. Oh, okay. So do you remember those problems where we tossed something up and we said starts here, goes down 12, that's negative 12. Or another way to think about it, let's say it goes up 0.5, it goes down 0.5, it's a displacement of 0, and then it keeps going down 12 more for a total of negative 12. That hasn't changed. Anybody graph it and get an answer for T yet? Hopefully somebody's graphing it and knows what they're doing. I don't remember. I think it's 1.8 or something like that. Somebody gets an answer, just let me know. 1.72? Sounds good. If you don't know how to graph it, as always, this is only worth half a point on a test to go from here to time. But you really should learn at this point. You've, you know, it's going to affect whether or not you get the final answer. So have someone show you how to graph it or stop it after school. So 1.72 seconds. Final step, we just plug and chug into here our formula for the x. Uh, I think I can squeeze that in here. So we'll have how fast in the x, which has not changed. So it's still 2.6 meters per second. And our time. And this happens to also answer the question how long it's in the air. This is our hang time. It's total time in the air. And that's the same for the x and the y. So 2.6 meters per second times 1.72 seconds. And what did somebody get for that? I guess I can figure that one out. Four point five ish meters. That's how far it lands from the base of the cliff. 
And at this point, you might be saying, who cares? Uh, we'll be launching rockets and seeing other applications very, very soon. At the very least, is launching rockets that are going to travel about the length of football field sound like fun? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so there's at least an entertainment part coming, probably not next week, but the following. Sounds yeah. Um, when you're writing that formula right under your components, to the right. Not this? Not that. To this. The, no, to the right. Yeah. Right, right there? Yep. Are you supposed to have t squared at the very end of that Here. by negative 9.8 meters per second? Yes, I am. Okay. Wait, why am I supposed to be not t plus 1 have a t squared? Oh, 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 no, no, not there. There should be a t squared there. Yeah, that's good. Absolutely, that. thank you. Uh, I picked it back up right here. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was. I just, I think I got to the board and then didn't. Other questions? <laughs> Looks like